Okay, so we're going to try to fix this thing. This is a club car DS. Can you hear that noise? Let me put that down here. Don't knock me off this thing. You notice the sound, it comes and goes. If you're sort of in a no load situation, it's really noisy. If you're, if you're hard on it, taking accelerating or decelerating, you don't hear it so much. But when you're in between a load, that's when it's the noisiest. So we're gonna to try to take, take this thing apart and see if we can't figure it out. So stay tuned. Here's, here's, listen. So if you go, Golf cart, not golf cart, it's a golf cart. If your golf cart's making that kind of noise, hopefully we'll figure this out in a day or two after we get it all apart. Oh. Yeah, see on the low? When the low is quiet, but when you let off of it, then it comes back. We'll fix it. Okay, here's test one. So I'm holding this wheel. Right, do it again, Ken. Make the noise. Okay. So it's making that sound. All right, now stop it. Let me stop. Let me... Go ahead and stop. All right, now do the other wheel. Okay. So what I'm doing here, because we have the differential, so, so because we still have the noise, either either I stop this wheel or stop that wheel, we still have the noise. So that tells me the outer bearing is okay. It's good. It's not coming from the wheel bearing. So it must be something to do either with the motor, the gear, something up higher, not past the differential side. So we got that part figured out, I think. So we'll dig a little deeper. Okay. So, so far we've accomplished about three things. First of all, we took the battery cables loose off the negatives so we have no power because we've got some wires we've got to undo down there. Took this backrest off, just four screws, 7 16 socket. Use the Phillips screwdriver to remove that plastic cover back there. I don't know where the cover went, it's here somewhere. But anyway, plastic cover that hides that big hole. So that gives us some access to it. So now I need to get me a little schematic. I'm gonna write down what wire, what wire goes where on each lug and then we'll see about getting this motor loose nothing looks heavy all right now see what i've done now i've cleaned the wires off i can see what color they are and i made me a schematic right there so i put everything back in place now this is important too don't just get on top of this top nut, nut and go wrenching it and twist the wire off inside the motor i want to be sure to hold the the bottom nut while you loosen the top nut. Now you really need two 14 millimeter wrenches. You may have to grind one down if they're really thick. But I've got a 9 16 so that's working. I, I was able to hold it and then break that one free. So I've got the two two on top loose. Now I gotta crawl underneath and get the bottom two loose. So we're making headway. Okay, now you see them underneath. I've taken one bolt from the bottom here. I'm assuming I got three more to go. So let's go back up to the top. And you can see I got my lower wires off also okay so actually it looks like there's only three of those bolts i just took two more out here you see the motors come coming loose a little bit now but that thing's gonna be crazy heavy so i'm gonna try to get me a ratchet strap or something i gotta come up with a plan 
so I can get a hold of it when it comes loose. I'll try to lower it to the ground or raise it up through this hole, I don't know which. Alright, you are recording. Alright, so aim it toward the hole, Let's see what we got. Now, I realize we don't know what we're doing. This is the first time we're, we've attempted to work on a golf cart. But let's just see if this works. I got two straps here. I'm trying to wiggle it, wiggle it. Wiggle it a little bit. I don't know what I'm going to do with it once it comes loose though. It's going to be awful heavy. Okay, there it is. All right. Mighty heavy, mighty heavy. Now can I lower it to the ground? Yep, okay. Lower it to the ground. Oh, good God, that's heavy. Three long arms. Oh, jeez. Hey, we made it to the ground. Hot dog. Okay, just give it a better look. Because uh, we're in an RV, we're in a campground doing this stuff. So don't have all the tools you need. But I always carry these heavy duty zip ties for stuff like this. So that came in mighty handy. So. Anyway, we got that out. That bearing seems good, so it must be deeper in the differential. Let's, 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 get, let's get to looking. Okay, now here's surprise number one. We're, so we're turning it. I'm turning the wheel here. So I'm forcing that shaft to turn. It, it is quiet as a mouse. Not making a bit of noise. And yeah, the bearing feels good. Let me see if there's any play in it. It's got a little bit, it's got a little up and down play, but there's no, no noise at all, unless it's the splines. Could it be in the, enough play in the splines causing that racket? Man, that motor is heavy. And the splines look good. Interesting. All right. Okay, well, we're about to put this back together, and here's the stuff I'm going to use on it. Uh, I think this will work, I'm hoping anyway. This is called Super Lube Synthetic Grease. I've used this before in other projects. I did some research about splines, about different type of aniseeds, different lubrication. A lot of stuff I kept reading and coming up with kept going back to synthetic grease. And so, let me find out what I had. You can see the details here about it. You know, as far as the temperature range, minus 45 to 450 degrees. But, uh, but it says here, particularly, see it outlasts conventional grease three to four times. And I believe it's a little bit thicker. So, so hopefully it'll stay in those splines longer than just what regular grease would do. Because uh, I've seen like a lot of motorcycles that use spline shafts. A lot of different companies recommend a, a synthetic type uh, grease. So that's what we're going to put on here. We're going to try it. If it don't work, we'll try something else. But uh, so let's head outside. Cool, from the campground we got a rocket going up it looks like. Cool beans. I didn't even know they were shooting a rocket today, but Swippy saw it going up evidently. So from Kissimmee over to NASA, we can watch it right here from the park. Awesome. Yeah, you can see it from here, and then it gets on up. Whoop, my finger in the way, got it out of focus. Yeah. So have you ever seen it? Yeah, we, yeah we've watched it before. Um, So I just found out that was a Starlink launch. Sending more satellites up so we have more, more internet all over the world. And Sweet Pea pointed up. We go straight up. It's moving. Look at this. Uh huh. Yeah. In the clouds, it's moving. Yeah, moving fast. Are we moving or is it moving? Okay, so. Like I said, we're trying to make an educated guess that this noise is coming from this dry spline. And here, I'm just going to put a liberal amount on that spline down there. And then I'm going to put some down in the motor shaft. And we'll try to ease all this back together and do a little test and uh, see if the noise gets better. 
It'd be great if it does. Like I said, I'm not a, I'm not a golf car tech by no means, but uh, I can usually fix most things that get in my way. Hopefully this will be a success. Okay, so trying to do this with one hand and film with the other. Just go in here and fill those splines full of this silicone grease. Turn the wheel a little bit. So that's all there is to it. Pretty easy process. Alright, get you up close here, see what I've done. A lot of grease on there. Right. Now we'll put us a big goop down in this hole here. That's probably too much, but the excess should just squish out. So I guess something else to be mindful of is look at the brushes. I noticed some of these brushes, they, they're wearing at different rates. Can you see the, the gap here? It's, this brush is almost flush, that little metal piece here. But look at another one here. This other, look how much space this one has. It's got a whole lot more life in it, so that's kind of odd. That one seems to have a whole lot of life in it. That one not so much, but this one has a whole lot of wear on it. So it's kind of interesting how one brush has so much wear than all the others. I don't know why that would be. I may have mentioned, I thought about taking this apart and inspecting this bearing. I talked to a friend of mine who's been doing, working on these things for 30 years and he said that uh, they can be a real burger to get out sometimes because this is so old uh, these bearings can get seized in here and he's even said he's even had, it had to even drill holes in here and press them out. So I believe our bearing is good. Uh, if we still have noise we may have to readdress that. So I'm opting to leave all, all of this together at the moment. Now I did find me a, a second 14 millimeter wrench. It's kind of thin, cheap little wrench. So I can get in here and I, I snugged each one of these up on these little ins insulators. Don't want to get crazy because you don't want to break, break one. But you do want to hold one nut as you tighten the other one. Because you don't want to twist it and break that insulator. So we'll slowly put this thing together. Okay, so I couldn't really video the part getting the motor back in place. But to show you what I did, I put the backrest here so I could get my knees on it. And then I had the motor sitting on the ground. And I just reached down in there and just lifted it straight up. And it actually kind of went in easier than it did coming out. And I just lined it up on the spline, slid it in there. And I just got to work it in to get those bolts lined up. Let's see if I can... It's getting closer. So I just got to get it turned in the right, turned in the right position. Find where my bolt holes go again. To get me a better light so I can see, so I can get those bolts started, bolts started, and pull them all in, and then hook my wires up, and we'll see if the noise is still there. All right, now you see we're underneath here. We got the motor installed mostly. We got this one snugged up, and we're just snugging up the top two right now. Just kind of stagger them so if you don't go crazy, you can over torque them. They're just quarter inch bolts. So we'll get that snugged up and then I gotta hook up my wires and we'll be ready to test fire short very shortly. Okay, so remember yesterday we made us a wiring diagram. Good thing we did, so that way we got everything back in place. Orange, green, white, and blue. Got all that back in place in case you messed yours up. You can look at my wires and they'll help you out hopefully. So I just crawl crawl under there and get them all snugged up. And remember to have used two wrenches. Hold that bottom nut so you don't twist off that lug or break that plastic insulator. All right, now this is just a preliminary test. I need to do it before and after, maybe on this video. All right, give her some juice.
Alright. That's a lot better. Still has noise, but maybe I just, it's going to have some gear train noise. Biggest thing is we get it on the road. We know what it used to sound like on the road. So we get it on the road. We'll, we'll give, it, give it a true test. Alright, so I'm doing a test run. And it sounds... It's, it's quieter. I'm not satisfied. I still get... Like, like in that coasting mode, I can still get a little, little noise. I think it might be the pinion. Pinion gear, possibly. I'm gonna try. I may try something else. But it does sound better. Let's say there it is. Still, get, still getting a little bit of noise that I'm not happy with. So let me keep. Let me do some thinking. All right. So now we're in the Plan B because here's here's a picture of schematic of that transaction what we're dealing with. So we lubricated the splines because they was really dry and it helped the noise a little bit. So now I'm suspecting the most noise we're getting is gear lash. You know, it's things old, you know, it's a 98 model. So it's had a lot of run time on it and I suspect this gear is getting worn. So we're getting a lot of uh, gear spacing, gear lash, causing that, that sound we're getting kind of when we're in a no load situation. So my next plan is, and you can see how high up it is in the differential, so it has to pick up the oil and carry it all the way up to this high spot. And so it's probably not getting a whole lot of oil. Now last year we still had this noise. We drained out, like they recommend a 30 weight oil. We drained out the 30, put in a 90 weight. Uh, so now I'm going to go a little step further. I'm going to go to this Lucas uh, heavy duty oil stabilizer. It is equivalent, equivalent to about a 200 weight. This is what I was told and I called Lucas. So uh, this might be an extreme measure, but I'm going to attempt this. Because first I got the thing, well, if the gear ever craps out, no big deal. I'll just buy another gear and rebuild the transaxle. But it turns out that gear is obsolete. Can't buy it no more. But they do supply, someone does, an aftermarket company does make a complete differential. But they're about 1200 bucks. So I'm hoping this will make it quieter. It'll last a few more years. If, if and when it craps out, it just looks like we'll have to put a whole differential in it. So we're going to drain the oil out of it now, the 90 weight, put in this Lucas. We'll take it for a test run and uh, see how that sounds. All right, see we're under the golf cart. Easy enough process. I jacked up that one wheel just a little bit so I can get it lean, so I can get as much oil out of it as I can. And I'm just going to use these plastic cups and catch the oil because what I want to do after I catch it, I want to examine it really well and see if there's any metal particles and all you need is three-quarter socket, three-eighths drive ratchet I've already broke them loose and see what we get out of here I don't think it holds very much I can't remember if these have a magnet on them or not. That'd be nice if they do. Alright. Yep, I see a magnet. I see a little fuzz on there. It's not good. Alright, now we'll take the fill plug out so it'll. Well, I don't know if I want it to drain fast. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna leave that in. I'm gonna let it drain out slow, so that way I can have a, I can if it gets, if it gets full, I can slide in this extra cup. So I'll get this drained out, and then we'll see, look for any metal. Okay, so whoops. So there's your up close view. A little bit of fuzz. I wiped it off right there, so uh, that doesn't concern me too much. It's, I guess I'd consider that normal wear. So uh, I'll wipe that off good and clean and we'll uh, put the sticker oil in there and put it all back together. Okay, so this is the first cup when I drained the oil out of. And I did that so I could see if there's anything scary in there. But just a few little specks of something. But nothing bad. No big chunks of metal. Just wanted to confirm that. Okay, so to get you an idea what we're doing, I got my little rubber hose here on the end of that. And actually, you see how I tilted it up? way the other direction so I can get as much oil in there as I, as I can. So we're just giving it a little squeeze till we get it in there and get her filled up till it comes out the fill hole. Well that's what I'm doing. Yeah. But check out how thick this oil is. 
it's 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 like a honey. So that should get it quiet, I would think. Check that out. All right, we'll go for a test ride. Okay, so last we left off, we put the 200 weight oil in the gearbox, and that seems to have helped some also. But uh, now I'm gonna go one more step. Remember, to start off with, we, we thought it could have been the splines being dry, making the noise, I put grease in it. So I talked to a friend of mine who's been doing golf cart repair for 30 years, and he told me some tricks to try some just pure silicone. Uh, hang on, let me show you. So here we, here's what we got, this pure GE silicone. He told me to put some of that on the on the splines, bolt it up, let it sit for 24 hours, let it kind of, you know, dry a little bit, and see if that won't help with some of the noise also. So that's probably going to be about my last step that we can do with, with this thing. Then after it's all said and done, because I got the video before and the video after, I'll cut back and forth between the two to see if we can tell that there's a difference. But I'm beginning to think it's just a gear lash issue, because you can see down the spline, if I can get down here, you can see it good. Alright. Because the wheels are on the ground. And you can see how much turn I'm getting. You can see how much turn I'm getting here, but you know, before. Because the wheels can't turn because they're sitting there. So and I, you know, with with its age, I guess it's probably normal. I'm not too concerned. I mean, like like I said, in the gearbox and the changed oil, we're not getting no metal shavings or anything. That seems pretty good. But like I mentioned, you can't we can't buy that gear no more. But they do make complete uh, new gear, rear ends. We can still get for uh, well, they thousand twelve hundred dollars. So we're just gonna do what we can and run it till it craps out. You know, it may last for years this way. I don't know for sure. But uh, so let's put some silicone in here and bolt it back together and see what happens. We are now filming. All right, let's get some let's good silicone. I'm just trying to squirt it in there too. I'll put a little bit down here on these splines. Just hope it don't give us no grief if we ever have to take it apart in the future. Alright, I think that should be enough. Right, we'll slide this. Alright, final shot before we put this motor back in. You see we made us a little shelf down here. So we, we, we took the motor off and left the wires on it. Because we put us some blocks down here to support the weight of the motor. So that made life a little bit easier. Of course we did also remove the cable from the battery always do that when you start mo moving these motors around all right so we're going to flip this on the side and ease it back on that spline and tighten it up we're going to let it sit for 24 hours and we'll take it for a test run and see what it sounds like okay yeah, so we get ready to eat we'll just eat okay you see we got it started so we we'll try to snug this in i tell you these straps these little straps we're using really help with picking that motor up and getting it lined up on that spline. I'm amazed it's just three screws hold this big heavy thing on there. It's been working all these years. Okay, lower the end, lower the high end. Okay. Alright, we'll have it here in just a minute or two. All right, we're about to go on the test ride, our final test ride. We've done all we know to do, and we'll see what it sounds like. Good or bad, it's about all we can do it, that I know of. Well, we're on our final test ride, and I think we may have whooped it. It is so quiet, we can't believe it. Cannot believe how quiet that is. Because usually, in between loads, you speed up and slow down, you get that horrible racket. Amazing. So, I think the silicone is what really did the trick. I mean, the, the thicker oil may have helped some, but I think that silicone was really the bomb. 
Now, before I say it's fixed, I'm going to ride this around for a day or two just to make sure and to see how well that silicone holds. If it, if it holds after a few days of riding, then I'll, I'll put this video together and we'll post it. <laughs> We've never heard that this could be this quiet before. So those splines, even though they look really good, really show no signs of wear. Those splines is where that racket, most of that racket is coming from. Oh, she's just so quiet. We can sneak up on people now. That is amazing. Oh, tickle paint, just tickle paint. So it's been over 30 days since we did that trick on the motor where we applied the GE silicone, silicone to the spline shaft on that electric motor to get the noise out of it and it's been whisper quiet. I could even sneak up on people now before people could hear me coming a mile away. So I'll give you an example. So we're, we're gonna, remember, and I'll, I'll probably cut some video in and out when it was, what it used to sound like and what it does now. So, so when we take off, as you can see the road down below, when we was under load, it wasn't so bad, but whenever we coasted, it, it would make a horrible racket. See, now I'm coasting to a stop. Nothing. Perfectly quiet. I just couldn't believe that that was the, the, the splines. Of course, also, I think it helped that Lucas Oil in the combination of both. But I think the bulk of the noise it's coming from that spline shaft. And speed up and slow down. I've got a ladder on the back making a little bit of noise. And I'm really pleased with this repair. And I think you can do the same with yours if your differential is making any racket. It gives you a couple, you know, between you doing remember I tried the I tried the grease thing on the splines, that didn't work. But, uh, the... Okay, so while I was editing this video, I wanted to make clear what product you need to use because it could be confusing because I'd use silicone grease that did not work, but then I used the silicone sealant on the splines that did work. And I'll put links to the proper product. Um, this here did not do its job. That did not work. This did. Get the picture of it here. There you go. I'll put a link to that. But So between the silicone... Uh, on the splines, the sealant on the splines, and the Lucas uh, oil treatment, those two things really got it, made the fix, and it's been over 30 days now, whisper quiet. So, back to the show. And the Lucas oil treatment and the differential has really made for a nice, quiet golf cart. Of course, you're, if you're in cold weather, that Lucas oil may be a little thick in the differential. But I imagine most people use golf carts in the warm weather. It's 90 degrees here today. So I'm glad to, I'm glad to have a nice quiet cart now. Hope you found this interesting. Again, thanks for watching and have yourself a blessed day. See you later. Bye-bye.